Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and implemented our little episodes carousel model here. This is a built-in functionality to the epoxy library that allows us to very easily add a horizontally scrolling list of information following their pattern with the epoxy models. Today's episode I want to talk about debugging network requests because there's a lot going on here. This entire list back here is paged uh, and then when we select on a particular character we then make a, re a request for that particular character and get a whole bunch of information back here as you can see that ends up loading this entire screen but at the moment without hitting a particular breakpoint we won't be able to actually debug and see the network information that's coming back to us Flipping over to our network layer here we can see we have an instance of retrofit with a particular base URL for our API our converter factory so that we can encode and decode JSON, and that's about it. However, we can add some stuff into this so that we can get some information about the responses and about the requests that are going in and out of our app. So flipping over to Google here, we can very easily see the logging interceptor that is part of the OKHTTP OK library from Square and we can very easily see a simple implementation here that's going to go ahead and log some information. So let's just go ahead and grab this implementation right here. Go back to our build.gradle file. I'm just going to go ahead and add in this little import and rebuild our project. Now that everything is rebuilt here, we can go ahead and define a function to go ahead and return a particular OK HTTP client that we can then attach to our retrofit instance. So let's say get logging http client it's going to return an ok http client and here we can create our client and format it properly so we're just going to call client ok http client dot builder it's a client dot add interceptor here and as we see in the documentation we can add a little HTTP logging interceptor. And we're very simply going to apply a particular level here. So instead, uh, well, I guess we can start with basic. So let's just very easily add that in. Make sure to be grabbing the OK HTTP3 logging level. And then we can very simply just return client.build. Maybe we'll rename this here to just say builder. Okay, and now we've gone ahead and created an OK HTTP client that has an interceptor that will log basically requests and responses. And so we can make use of this now in our retrofit instance by calling simply dot client and passing in the get logging HTTP client that we've just created right there. And let's go ahead and rerun this. So rerunning the application here. You can see that absolutely nothing has changed to the user. You click on somebody, everything still seems to be fine. However, if we take a look at our run and at our log here, we can see some information, which is wonderful. We can see a get request here for page one. We can then see a 200 on that same page coming back. We can then see the same thing here for page two, a response of 200, page three going out, coming back in, and then even here, when we went and clicked on our uh, Rick Sanchez here, we can see the request going out and coming back in. So this is nice. We get a little bit more information from what we had previously, but still not all that useful, not all that helpful, other than seeing some responses here. So if we just go ahead and revisit the level that we are setting here on our uh, HTTP logging interceptor, we can change it from basic to body and rerun some things. And now we will not only see what we had seen previously, but we will also get some information about the actual response itself. So we don't really care about the, uh, the app here, we know what it's doing, but we can see here we are getting page one, and we have our page one returning here with 200. We can then see a whole bunch of additional information here, uh, all the way down to here, which are the headers that are associated with the request and in this case, the response here. Then we can very easily see as well, the actual JSON that comes back here uh, in the body. 
the response here. We can even see here that it's ending, how big the body is, how long these requests are taking, 125 milliseconds, 721 milliseconds, etc. And then in here, we can see this entire uh, JSON. Now, unfortunately, it is uh, A, quite large. As we can see, we're flying through this and there's still so much. Uh, but also, it's very difficult to read, right? I mean, this massive response has just been output to the log, uh, to the console, so it's really not all that helpful uh, when it comes to larger scale endpoints or where we're, where we're receiving a whole lot of information. Uh, the, the, it starts to kind of cloud the logging here. If we go ahead and maybe click on somebody, and let's click on someone that doesn't have too many episodes here. I think this guy only had two. Uh, we can revisit this, and then we can see here that it's only a few lines. Uh, nope, that's still page three. Where is it? Uh, oh, here we are, character number seven. And then here we can see uh, the response here. So if we can go ahead and shift click all the way over, we can copy that, maybe go to a nice uh, JSON viewer here, paste this in, we can click format, and here we have it, right? And here we have uh, a nicely formatted, uh, if you want to go to the viewer, you know, and you can kind of see um, exactly what was given to us here. So this is great. This will allow us to debug what our app is getting, make use of that, ensure the data is coming back the way that we want it. And, you know, if you run into any errors, you can uh, get the information that was returned to you from the back end and, you know, do what you will with that. However, there's an even better option when it comes to logging and debugging. And for that, we're also going to go back to Google here, and we're going to search for Chucker Interceptor Android. So clicking on the first one here, we have the Chucker team. Uh, I think this is the most recent one. Uh, yes, but all we have to do here is we can go ahead and copy these two uh, dependencies right here and then head back to our build.gradle and we can go ahead and sync this stuff up once we go ahead and, uh, and paste it in there. So you'll notice actually there's a little bit of a difference between implementation, debug implementation, and release implementation. So implementation here by itself is going to apply to all of your build types. And without getting too far into uh, the whole build system and whatnot, you can define different build types inside of this little section here for your app. And this is where you can kind of separate, you know, your release, your production version uh, build type from your debug version, right? That might be in your own sandbox environment or, you know, something that isn't production. Implementation here is going to be a dependency that's added to all of those uh, build types, no matter how many you have here. And then the debug implementation and release implementation are specific implementation and dependencies for those different versions or those different types. So this one here is saying that the debug implementation will have this dependency here, which is the Chucker Team Library 3.4.0. And then the release implementation here is the exact same, except the NoOp 3.4.0. And the reason for that is that this is a debugging library. This is a library that's going to show you all of your network requests, all of the responses, uh, the headers, everything, etc. And you don't really want that in the release version of the app. So this library is nice enough to say, hey, you know, in your release version, we're going to go ahead and not allow any of this stuff to work. So let's go ahead and flip back here. It's very simple to start using this trucker inside of our OK HTTP client builder. We can add an interceptor and that will be the chucker interceptor. So let's bounce back here to our network layer where we have our get logging HTTP client and we can go ahead and add this interceptor to our logging client here. So we can just simply say builder.add interceptor, again the chucker interceptor and this requires a context which looks like it's deprecated. Um, okay, so we're going to need a context here uh, let's just do this for now. It's going to be a little gross because we're not using dependency injection at the moment, nor do I think we have an application class. Ah, you know what? We're just going to build an application class really quickly here. So 
So we've very simply added a simple Morty application class, which just extends application. And now if we bounce over to our manifest file and inside of this application tag here, write name, and it already comes up with a little uh, autocomplete for us, the simple Morty application. This means that this class will then go ahead and get invoked basically when the process is starting and can kind of act as like the all seeing parent above all the activities. Uh, and that makes life a little bit easier for us here because then we can simply just say simple Morty application dot context and we have a context outside of the context, no pun intended, of the uh, you know activity uh, classes. We seem to be deprecated here uh, and so they have a little replace with which is convenient. We're going to go ahead and copy this to go here and import that. Um, so this just seems to be like their default implementation that we've gone ahead and or that they've gone ahead and so graciously given to us. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, for some reason they've deprecated it and then they give us the replace with, although this looks pretty similar to, yeah. Uh, okay, anyway, so we're going to add this interceptor here and this is safe to do again because of that whole release implementation no op kind of thing it's not going to work in your release builds but it will work in your debug builds here so if we go ahead and run this now we should see uh, a little bit more helpful information here along the way okay so again nothing new here uh, as far as what the user can see again pretty similar stuff with the ok HTTP client uh, that's all still happening because we have this interceptor. However, uh, if you notice up here in this little notification bar, there is this interesting double arrow icon. And if we pull down and actually uh, take a look at it, we can see here a little bit of network activity. See here, recording HTTP activity. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click on Morty Smith so that we go ahead and add another one here. But now we can see a handful of uh, endpoints and network requests that have gone out. So if we click on it here, it actually opens an entirely new application. As you can see here, our other application is right there. But this is kind of an extension activity of our uh, application, which comes as part of the library. And you can see here a whole bunch of information. So we can go ahead and click on one of them. We have a nice little overview tab here uh, where it gives us the URL here, the method, the response code, the size of the request and the response. We can flip over to the request area. Now, we didn't necessarily add any headers or have a, a request body or anything along those lines, so this is empty, obviously, but the response here, we can see all of these nice headers outlined for us here, and then the actual JSON here, uh, completely formatted as you would expect. Again, this is a large endpoint, so we're getting a lot of data back so that it is a little gross to look at, but you can see this. and the nicest part honestly is that there's a little share icon we can share as text you could do curl command file but if we do text and if we simply just copy this we can then go ahead and bounce back to this JSON viewer control a control V and it's gonna have this junk at the top um, that has all the information about the request and the response but if you just go all the way to basically this first bracket you can delete it and then you can go over to the viewing section of things here and you can see here uh, all of this information again being pulled out that we can see for us and that we can kind of just dive into and take a look at let's go with number 16 uh, ID 17 because we started zero obviously yep um, and yeah you can kind of just see all this information here and, and debug some things and check things out and uh, you know do what you will with this information but this uh, Chucker library here really allows you to, to get a deep dive into the information that you're asking for, that you're getting back. If there were other errors here, like server-side errors or unauthorized errors, you would see the 401s or the 500s or whatever the case is here. So maybe we take a look at this one here because it's a little bit nicer to see the API character too. You know, you can see here the entire uh, payload makes a little bit of sense here. It's a little bit easier to see because it's just smaller outside of this massive episode array. Um, you can kind of see all of the actual information here associated with Morty Smith, the second character from this API. And so there you have it. Pretty quick, 
pretty simple implementations here, really just adding in this OK HTTP client. Plays very nicely with our retrofit implementation. We can just simply add it in there. You can go ahead and do a whole bunch of other stuff with interceptors. You can modify headers or requests. You can simulate certain errors that you get back or whatever you want to uh, kind of do. You can manipulate the requests or the responses as they go in and out uh, through your networking layer that exists here. So we're going to leave it here for now because this is all that we need to cover. But in a future episode, we can dive a little bit deeper into the interceptors and just how powerful they really are. Um, here, we're just using two interceptors that are basically provided to us from the different libraries that we added, the dependencies that we added. Uh, but you can implement your own interceptor really quickly if we just take a look at the implementation in here. Um, interceptor is simply just an interface that you can go ahead and implement. Again, observes, modifies, potentially short circuits, requests going out, and corresponding responses coming back in. Typically, interceptors add, remove, or transform headers on the request or the response. So we can dive so much more into this. You can see here them basically faking a particular 400. Uh, so you can see how your app would react in that certain scenario. So there's a whole lot that you can do here with interceptors. They are a very powerful tool. And you know, once you start talking about authentication and needing the authorization headers and all that kind of stuff, there's really no other way to do it without an interceptor. So they're definitely worth knowing about. But there we have it. We have a, uh, uh, two wonderful ways to look at the information that we actually were uh, interested in. And Chucker is my personal favorite. There's just so much that you can do uh, with it. There's just so very helpful. And then if you're, of course, providing this application to, you know, internally to your team or something like that, it's quite easy to share and uh, see exactly what's going on on their device with that particular user or what have you. So it's um, a very powerful debugging tool in general. And so if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. If you learned something new, I'd really appreciate a like. And if you notice that you are not subscribed at this point, I'd really appreciate you subscribing, help out the channel a little bit, and hopefully so you can continue learning a thing or two here. So I'm going to leave it here. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks.